Welcome to Customizing the Macro Toolbar. This is Don Barnes on behalf of Studio One Expert. And today we're gonna to talk about customizing the toolbar and making it work better for you. So don't live with the default toolbar unless it totally works for you. If every tool on there is something you want, something you use, great. But for most of us, a different toolbar would be more effective and have tools on it that we use all the time. So I highly recommend you take some time and you customize it. I'm gonna give you the essentials today in this video. And then on part two, you'll get some ninja tools. If you work on more than one machine, then I'll show you how to take this toolbar, your custom one, and transfer it to another machine. Or if you want multiple toolbars that you wanna swap in and out, I'll show you some great details in the background that you can use to have multiple machines with the same setup, to have different toolbars that you swap in and out depending on what task you're doing, and some other things and details about how it works, how to customize it. But today we're gonna to talk about the essentials. So in this toolbar, the first thing is, if you don't see your toolbar, you need to go up here to what I call RoboGuy, and you can hide the toolbar, you can display the toolbar, depending on what you're doing. If you want the space back, hide them. If you don't need the space, show them. I leave mine exposed virtually all the time, but that's a decision. Do what works best for you. Now, if you don't see RoboGuy, that means you're on version two, and you need to go out to Exchange, the Personas Exchange, and there is an ability to download the toolbar. But I'm gonna assume everybody's on three for this. If not, get a hold of me. I'll show you how to plumb that in under version two. Also note, if you have the free version, it's not part of it. You can't have this toolbar. You need to get yourself to Artist, get yourself to Pro, either one of those has that. So, and then the one other caveat, I'm gonna talk about right click all the time because we right click, it shows a context menu. If you happen to be one of those people with a single button mouse, you know that it's control click on the Mac, or if you're on a trackpad, and usually it's a two finger behavior, and you know what it is for your device, I'm just gonna say right click, and I'm gonna assume you're gonna translate for me. Now this toolbar starts with the alignment centered. Now for me, I like it aligned over on the right. The reason is that puts my mouse tools closer to the audio itself. I don't have any audio over here, but just do whatever works for you. Note that the bottom also moves to match that. So in my case, I'm over here on the right. Then you have little groups that are here. So this is the record group and it's these four buttons. And I have the split group and these are just mine. Here's can be totally different. There's nothing magical about these groups. This is the edit group, volume group, etc. Now, yours isn't gonna look anything like this to begin with. I'll show you what yours is gonna look like. Yours is gonna look more like this. This is a screenshot from my Mac and this is the default. I reset my Mac so that I could show you exactly what it was gonna look like in there as they start with the word edit, I change that to admin. I'm gonna show you how to change it. And there are some things, the first two buttons here are the same as the default, but you can add these, take them off, put them back later. I kept a split group. A couple of these now in version 3.2 and beyond are just not needed. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna take these off. By the time somebody sees me again, I will not have these two buttons here because they don't make any sense anymore, but they did up until version 3.2. And then you have some other things here. Now, if you're not doing quantizing and you don't need these, just take them off, take them off, get rid of them, put things here that are relevant to you. So this is what your default's gonna look like. This is customized for actions that I do and things that I'm doing regularly, yours will be different. This is my narrator's toolbar complete. And then I have a light one that I give away free as well. So I'm gonna just close this and we're gonna look at my custom one. So we have these groups here. What can you do with groups? Well, the real trick, you wanna shut this video off, right click on everything. I think I said that already, but if I didn't, right click on everything. So if I wanna take and, and add a new group, it is positional. If I'm on top of the buttons and I'm to the right hand half of it, and I right click and I choose new group, bottom here, it'll add the group to the right. If I go to the left half of this group toward the top, any place up here, and I right click and I choose new group, it's gonna put the group on this side. So it's really smart about that. It's looking at where I'm starting the action and where I'm right clicking and putting the group here or here. If I'm gonna add a button, if I go in between existing buttons and I add a new button, it gives me this tiny little checklet here in the middle and then I can right click on that and we can do some things with that button. We can assign things to that and we'll do that in just a second. But you'll notice it's positional. 
If I go down below the buttons and I right click, I also only get these items related to new buttons or a new group, but what I don't get is the ability to edit things within the group. So let's look at this group here. I'm going to take this one away, remove group. And we'll start right here. Any place within the group when it has nothing else in it, I can go in and double click here, just like an event, and I can say fantastic group. And I can type all that, fantastic group. And then I can right click here and I can add a new button. There's a button there. Now you can do it a couple ways. Maybe I'll go through sometimes and I'll add a couple buttons if I want two or three of them. Maybe I add one at a time, doesn't really matter, totally up to you. But then you right click on them. Now you have two things you can do here. Number one is I could go ahead and I could actually name it by clicking up here. I'm not going to do that. You can assign commands or you can assign macros or you can take one of the built-in buttons. These are actually equivalent to admin buttons. So most people won't ever mess with these unless you accidentally delete your groups here. Watch the Ninja version, part two of this series, if you want to get into some of these higher end things. You just don't need them most of the time. So what does this mean, assign command? Well, there are all sorts of menu commands. Now let's assume, for example, I happen to always use delete time. It's very, if you're doing narration, if you're doing podcasting or voiceover work, we need to go ahead and delete time quite regularly. So we would go in here and then we would choose edit, delete time, and just get rid of that time. I want to do that. But I do it all the time. So I want to assign that to a macro. So if I choose assign, assign command, I can start typing here, delete, and you'll see it comes right up. It gives me the subset here, and I assign that, and then it names it for me. Now, here's what I do all the time. I generally take this and make this an abbreviation. So what I'm going to do here is simply call this DT, because I'll remember what that is. But if I don't remember what that is, when you hover over it, there's still a tooltip that is going to show you exactly what it is, which is a great thing. You'll see that when I assign a macro, and I'll assign a macro, my macro names are longer than almost anybody you'll ever meet. And there's a reason for that, so watch this. I'm going to choose this Insert Copied Audio to Cursor on Audio Track. Say that in one good go. And you notice that what it does is it names that exactly what the macro was named. Now that's a bit much for me, so I'm going to go in here, double click, and then I'm going to say VO insert. You can call it anything you want. And now I get this great thing. The macro button is named short, but the complete macro shows up in the little tooltip, the little thing that pops up there telling me the details. So what you can do is you name your macros with some nice, long, descriptive name. Let's see if this is a long one, too. That's a short one. This is a, ah, this is a VO delete with crossfade. This is going to be insert copied audio. So what you see is that's the same as this. And you can have these things that have much longer names because that's the actual name of the macro that shows up in that yellow tooltip. And this gives a little more detail. So I name my macros with long names. And then when I put them on here, I shorten them up to something that I remember. I don't care if you can't remember it. I mean, I like you and all, but it's really for you. You name them something that means something to you. Who cares if nobody else can figure out that DT is my equivalent of delete time? And if I can't remember, I just hover over it and I see it there myself. Fair enough? So that works pretty darn well. Now, if I don't want a group, I can go ahead and just delete the group. But if I want to move a group or move a button, the control or command key is your friend. So if I hold down the control key, I now can move this button to the other side. I can move it to a different group. As long as I keep the control key held down, I can move a button. I also can take and hold down the control and move the whole fantastic group to another location if we choose to. And I should tell you a little bonus here. I have a tendency to put the tools in the middle of the screen that I use the most. I'm going to get rid of this guy move button. These are going to be the things I use the most, and therefore they are closest to the middle of the screen for me, because when we're working, I don't want to go very far. Now, some of these I even have on a shortcut key, and because of that, I can use the shortcut or I can use the button, but I want to keep them as close to the middle. Things that I use less are at the ends for me. Now, you don't have to do it that way. We'll get rid of this group now. 
But that's the way I do it. And that's also why I take this and I don't align it center. I don't align it left because that puts these things not in the location that's close enough for the way I work. In addition, there are times where we'll break this out where you take this detach icon here, just like all the other panels, and you can grab it. If I'm working on some audio that's down at the bottom of my screen, every once in a while I'll detach this and put this down here and I'll use the tools very close to the location rather than going all the way to the top if I'm working on audio down here. It's just easier. Now, most of the time I do not. I leave it attached and leave it up here in its little dock area. But you can do that whenever you want. And you should if it speeds up your workflow. This is what I recommend to people. You go If you want this button or your undo button, or any of the other buttons that you use a lot. Let's say you use minus three all the time. So you select an area and you have minus three and you're just doing this all day long. But you know what? Go over here and add a new button and put the same thing on it twice. There's no rule that says you can't go ahead and put this on here twice. And of course, I would probably go in here, right click, double click. And I'm gonna take out all this stuff here. I just don't want any of this stuff. So get rid of that. And I'm gonna have it the same short name that I have over here on this other side, okay? But you can put it here, you could take this one and you could hold down control or command and put this over here and have a second one here. So that's a real handy thing to do. Put them in multiple places if you need them, if you use them all the time. I just don't wanna go very far, all right? There's no rule. Hey, I've got that on there already. Yeah, put it on there twice if that makes your workflow better and more consistent. You also can take all your macros and you can create icons for them if you wish. So for example, the record button, I created two cheesy macros, two cheesy icons, and actually I stole it. So I found this someplace. I'd love to give credit to the gentleman where I got this. I can't remember. I found it on the web someplace. And now you can, and then I made a slight modification to it where I put a little border around it. So now this one has a white border. The point is this, you can take and put any icon with this. These are ping files, PNG, and as long as they are 22 pixels high, that's the max. You can do 18 to 20, you can do whatever you want in there, but these are 22 max, and then they can be as wide as you want. So you can have 40 or 60 if you want something wider. And then if you do do that, then what I recommend is you go in here and take that away. And then that way, all you have is the little icon there. And that is going to fire the exact same macro that it did before. So what you see is right click on everything. This will allow you to align it the way you want. Right click on this and you can change the text by double clicking here. You can assign it to a command. You can assign it to a macro. I'll go over these in the second version. They're just not used by very many people. You can take the icon and you can select an image and as long as you have the right size, they'll go right in there and you can move these things around with the control key first or the command key. And once you do, you'll see the little line. You can move this over here, hold it first, move it back. You can take the whole group, move the groups around. And then another thing I do recommend is hat. you can take the same icon and you can recreate it in different spots if it's something you use regularly. Don't limit yourself. And you can do other things with this. I haven't shown you everything. In the next video, we're gonna talk about moving this whole thing. Cause you, you spend some time, you customize this whole thing. You get it all set up the way you want it. And then you go to your other machine and oh man, it's totally different. Now I gotta do it all again. It's not that much work. You can do the whole thing in 10 minutes once you know what you're doing. But I don't wanna do that. I just wanna transfer the right folder and I'll show you how to do that in the next video. And then there's some other real, you know, power user tricks that you can do. The big takeaway from this is that this is a power tool for you. Anything, because these macros allow you to combine a whole set of steps. Uh, something that people wanna do if they're doing voiceover all the time is copy something. I just copy that, I'll do it with the menu so you see what I did. I usually do it with the keyboard shortcut. And if I wanna take that music there and I wanna put it, let me put it right down here within this right there. So I'm gonna take what I copied over there and I'm gonna replace. And so I can use this VO replace and boom, what it did was it did a ripple edit, 
you put it in there. There's a whole bunch of steps that are going on behind the scenes there, and I did it with a single click. Now, I have it on a keyboard shortcut, too. I do all sorts of things with keyboard shortcuts, but I don't do everything with a keyboard shortcut because also the action menu has things on it that I can use, and I'll show you more about this in the next video. This is a real power tool as well. You can have macros that aren't showing up, and you can use them. You can have macros you assign to keyboard shortcuts, and you can use them. So this is just a taste of what you can do. We'll expand on it in part two of this video and be sure to check out the Studio One Expert site. There's so many great videos, so many great blog articles. It'll cut your time. It'll make you be more efficient. You can get back to your music, back to your narration and back to life sooner. So I hope you enjoy this. This is Don Barnes for Studio One Expert. And of course, I'll see you on the wires.